Do you wanna make money selling sports cards in the fastest way possible? Today I'm gonna to show you guys a day in the life of me selling on Whatnot Sports. Do I wanna open a card shop? The answer still is no, maybe one day. Until then, you guys gotta find me online or find me at the next card show. Let me show you guys a day in the life, here we go. So as you guys know, since we're doing Vlogmas here, I am opening all the mail you guys send and my PO box is down below, but if you don't, See that? Well, here it is, guys. P.O. box right here. If you wanna sign sticker, I've been signing a bunch of these. And another thing I've been doing, which I wanna show you guys, is I've been signing some cards to send in with the stickers. And these have specific dates on them. This is from 12-6. Got some inscriptions on a couple of these. These are just some base parts I wanted to add to people's collection. Kinda of commemorate some of my PCs. Kinda of what I told you guys. If you wanna send me one of your favorite players or team signed card and I can show, put in a magnetic, I'll show it at the end of the year and those will actually be, you know, true PC stuff. So don't forget to write in, you know, share your story. Add upload schedule every day at 4.30. I'm literally making sure that I'm, I'm recording and creating content. I don't always know what content I'm gonna make. I'm kind of just like thinking as I go, going to Southern California. So we're gonna hit some shops. I might try to pop into a couple California shows and sneak into those. And I, I definitely wanna hit some local card shops in California the next few weeks for Vlogmas. So if you guys have any recommendations, I'll definitely take them. And you know, we got Christmas time coming up, which is always super exciting. It's a great time for, you know, to spend time with your family and friends, which I obviously am doing now. And you know, your loved ones. And you know, it also could be a tough time too. So anybody watching this, if you're, you know, going through it and this is a nice break for you, I see people commenting, you know, that these videos kind of help people get through. I want you to know you're not alone and I got, you know, mad love for you guys. So All right, if you're watching this, these have been horrendous packs. I'm opening this for Tim right now and whatnot. If he pulls a Wemby, I'm gonna jump in the pool. These are the gold VIPs. In my opinion, they're not great. I bought for 100, sold it for 52. Tim was feeling real risky tonight. We got people in the chat. Chat, say what's up to YouTube. This is part of Vlogmas. There's a lot of live selling apps out there, but nothing beats Whatnot's interface, technology, the community on Whatnot, 10 out of 10. We don't do breaks, we sell singles. It's an absolute vibe. If you wanna start your business today, hop on Whatnot, you're not missing out. And if you're not on there, you're really missing out. Chat's popping off. It's one and done, so I'm gonna tell you right now, this is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show the back card. The back card's usually not the good card. Oh shit, look who he pulled though. Wait, this could be good. I just said the back card's horrible. I've never seen the back card be something like this. Oh shoot, okay. Here we go. CJ Stroud on the back. I'm gonna flip it, this is it. So we know we have CJ Stroud. This is, this is not bad. I can't believe it. All right. Oh, Danica Patrick. And okay, CJ Stroud. Oh, dang, dude, that's the true rookie. He doesn't. That's sick though, oh boy, that was pretty good. I thought it was gonna be numbered, but man, that's still sick. All right, let me get a sleeve and a top. His first Texans rookie jersey, or rookie card, wow, in a jersey. Tim said thanks, not awful, there you go. Me, Mario, I brought the stash in. Cleaned up after the uh, show, so usually typically my routine, I like to work out before the show. I get myself, you know, play some video games and then I get it going. You know, what not for me is where I love to sell. And you know, you can say what you want, but all I can tell you is it's the easiest platform for me to buy and sell cards. Seller experience and buyer experience is different, but I've had a good time selling on there and, and as a buyer, I've had a great experience on there picking up some cool stuff. Packaging this order up for Gotta Swipe them all right now. So he gets a box, which is the seven by five by nine. Luckily with Whatnot's shipping service, I just print the label and it's so easy. This guy purchased a DAC as well, so we really wanna protect this DAC. Rookie Auto, they're playing really well against the Eagles tonight. So once again, just some more bubble. And then, like I said, the team bags from our supplies video. But in my opinion, if you guys wanna sell cards, I would highly recommend using Whatnot. And I'm just not just saying that because we partner up with them on a bunch of stuff. I will use whatnot more than any anything else to sell my cards or to even just to interact and do do all the cool stuff we get to do. I like these boxes because I can just I use the bubble wrap. I have a whole system for it, and you know I like obviously I like efficiency, but at the same time I want stuff to be secure and protected, and that's kind of what we're going for. So tonight's sale we did two thousand three hundred. And 80, that's before fees. I'm just talking, I haven't broken down the profit margin on that. If I owned a shop, I'd have to expect people to spend $2,380 in my card shop when I can go online and just run a sale. 
Do you follow what I'm saying? That's why when everyone asks me, like, do I want to own a shop? I think our shop would do great if we had a card shop, but at the same time, it's like every, every online sale seems like such, just like a no brainer. Like, and this was only in an hour and a half. There are some nights where I'll go live for five hours and we'll pull 10 to 12,000, you know, and I just can't say that if I owned a card shop, I don't know if that's happening. And I know a lot of card shops do online and they do the brick and mortar, but it's just interesting. It's an interesting concept. And I'm just being, you know, kind of trying to be more transparent on like what I'm actually doing here. 21 ounces, it's plenty. 12 by 12 by 12, it doesn't matter. I'm not, so it's gonna be go priority. He ordered a lot of stuff. So I'm using him as our, our guinea pig. So look at this, go here, I click print. I'm gonna cover his address. Look at that, boom, what a sound. And then all I have to do is I drop these off at the post office and I personally go to a grocery store and they do a great job with me. They take my stuff in, they scan it, and they do a great job. So that's an order right there. So, you know, processing orders, shipping, selling, try to go live on there. From a business side, what's what's my main component? I love making content, right? Selling cards is cool too, but you know, in life and in business, if you go to college, they'll tell you you gotta have seven forms of, you know, money coming in. So, you know, sometimes it's stocks, sometimes it's investments real estate my dream's always been to like obviously want to open a card shop to some extent the travel and everything i just can't imagine owning a shop and wanting to go to all the shows you know and, and i know i could open a shop whenever i want and if you guys would ever support my shop i you know i'd be honored i'd be honored to hang out there and talk with everybody and meet the people that have supported me since the beginning. And I think when the time's right, if I wanna open a card shop one day, I think it'll hit. We will all reap the rewards, you know? It's gonna be something we all do together. But for now, I really just wanna to continue to travel the world, keep going to shows and highlighting, you know, how great the hobby is. And going to other shops, you know, I've taken so much intel from shops, I feel like I, I have an idea of what I would want in my shop, you know, for an experience. and. You know, I'm not an expert by any means, but I've just, I've learned so much through the process and it's been an absolute joy. It makes me so happy to be a part of something like this. A lot of people open up and you know, it's it's such a great healthy outlet to have, you know, since I was four, or 14, 15 years old being a part of this thing, it's just always been constant, you know? You wanna get people the cards that belong in the right collection, you know, and that's, that's kind of what we're looking for, a lot of collectors. And some people wanna flip the stuff too and it's fine, like, I know there's people that join my streams that are making good money and you know what? There's nothing more I could ask for than that. You know, I want them to be happy. I want them to make their money and to get a good experience through the process. We talked about like what works in the hobby. I'm gonna tell you guys what I've seen throughout the years and what doesn't work, right? You know, I think reputation's everything, you know? I think if you're trying to get the easy way out when you're a streamer or even if you own a card shop, I've seen so many people with the best cards, man, the most expensive collections with the worst attitudes and little respect for people, right, as human beings. That doesn't fly with me, man. And I think if you're someone, you know, wants to be successful in the industry or as a collector, just be a part of, just be another grain of salt in the sand, man. We're all doing the same thing. We love certain things, respect people, right? I think a lot of the problem I've noticed in the industry is there's just a lot of smack and there's a lot of jealousy and anger and just a lot of who's who and this and that and that doesn't fly and i think a lot of people see through that and i think you know if you're watching this video and you know maybe i've said something or done something that you know maybe didn't rub you the right way like hey you know what like i'm not perfect either right i've got my moments of weakness where i want to be right sometimes and like i don't i don't always have the time i don't always have the full energy for people and i'm human being right but at the end of the day, I, I highly recommend, you know, learn from mistakes. Like I've seen some people get mad at others when their cards don't go for a certain number. Like that doesn't work. People see through that. And I've also seen card shops that talk smack about card shops in the card shop. I think that's the most disrespectful, like out of line thing I've ever seen in card shops. And I just don't really, I don't really appreciate that, you know? So if you're gonna carry yourself in this business, have a good reputation, craft a community, build a brand. You know, I, I know that there's a balancing act between business operations and branding. Our branding's clutch. Our business ops, I've always said, it's something I've been trying to really work on. You gotta create systems that work for you, like Burbank Cards and John and Lisa, that baseball card connection. I tried to break. I'm not a breaker, right? We don't break, we don't have a card shop, that's not, that's not what I do. I tried breaking and I lost a couple grand and I knew to myself, I was like, this isn't gonna work. I'm entering breaking at the wrong time and I'm glad I never continued with breaking because I would have lost a lot of money. Breaking works for certain people, it's not my, it's not my thing. I broke when I was in high school and it just didn't work for me. So 
when you're in this industry, find out what systems are working. If single cards are gonna work for you, do it. If you break target breaks, that's fine. If you break, if you have a tops account and you break, that's fine. If you break on whatnot and it works for you, keep doing it, but find the system that works. And most importantly, find the right people. I've seen some of the best breakers and the best card shops and the best online presences with some of the worst people working for them. And the reason why is because the character's off. If you have a brand, like I tell my guys, that I tell JD, I tell Steve, and I tell uh, Shane, you know, we are honest, we're very respectful, and we're passionate people that wanna build this brand up. We wanna give authenticity. We want, you know, honesty. We want vulnerability. We want connection. That's what I tell my guys. And I hope that they can replicate 1% or all of it into the world as we go and do our content or we're going to do our singles. Or Zach, who works for me as well, Pastime Sports. I try to build my team and I try to t implement values. So I, my advice is, if you find the team, you can, and it's the word I learned from Jimmy. I've learned so much from other people. This isn't my own thing. I've learned a lot through experience. Jimmy always said it to me. You can teach people cards. You can't teach good characters. So find the right people to work for you. I've seen so many breakers ruin their brands because they just had the wrong guy that's pocketing the money, really upset about breaks, treating the customers like crap. You don't want that. So field that out. Build a team that works for you. I've always had a good radar for it. And you know, I've had to cut people off in my life and in my business because they just didn't line up with what I wanted, you know, and I, I can't deal with that. I can't as a human being and as a brand, let my brand and my, my own self, my peace of mind suffer as a result of someone else bringing us down. This is not gonna work for me, right? You know, your brand is everything. You know, if someone gets a $60 card for $20, congratulate them, right? Just move forward, right? You take a loss on a box, you take a loss on this, or someone pulls a great card, be happy for your customers, right? I think greed gets in the way of success in this business, you know? And I think I've already said in the beginning, I've seen so many people with the best collections, the most amount of money and just bad attitudes. And I just don't, I don't deal with that, right? I don't, I don't jive with that. That's not my vibe. And uh, you know, I, I think everybody, including myself, I see through that. Have fun with it, build your brand, build an Instagram. Instagram's huge. That's another last piece of advice. Like I see too many people that are just setting up at shows, but they don't have the brand to it. Build the brand and, and pers personalize yourself, right? And if you're scared, just know that we've all been scared too. I've been scared to put my face out there. I'm scared to put my story out there, but you gotta go through it. Go through the uncomfortable and build your way up. And with that, I hope you guys uh, you know, took something from this. If you have any questions, I answer every comment. I try to, I'll answer any questions you guys have. Just don't forget to like and comment down below and subscribe. It's all love.